Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Think Further webinar on digital skills development, developing your online profile. My name is Mark, and I'm the coordinator for today's discussion. The speaker I have invited today is Davina Whitnell. Hello, Davina. How are you? Hello, Mark. I'm very well, thank you. Davina is a training consultant and researcher developer working in higher education for over 13 years. She started her research uh, development journey in 2005 with the University of Manchester in postgraduate skills training in the Faculty of Life, Life Sciences as EPROG Project Manager and Progress Platform Functional Lead for the University. Davina is now a researcher developer for the University of Salford and a freelance training consultant, writer and coach. She has published three books. The first book is a guide on how to build an enabling structure and help researchers realize their potential and has been titled as the essential guide to research and development. The second is more general and is a self-help guide on how to develop your own personal brand of confidence called Ketchup. <laughs> the third book covers today's topic. It is a guide to developing your digital skills to raise your profile and is called Digital Skills Development, Developing Your Online Profile. But before joining the University of Manchester, Davina worked for the cooperative group as the National Training Design Officer for the Retail Division and developed a range of interactive training for ethics and training tracking systems. She particularly enjoys working closely with researchers in her current role and has a passion for the public engagement of research and science. But at this point, I think we are ready to start discussing the topic of digital skills development, developing your online profile. In today's webinar, we have three sections. First section is why should I bother? The second section is what can I use? The third is where do I start? And actually we have a little section on the end for some concluding remarks from Davina on how to get the most from technologies. And these sections are structured around your questions. What I'm gonna do is read the, the title of each section then go through the, the set of questions and an overarching question that I would like Davina to answer, which will encapsulate all of the information within your question set. So, without further ado, the first section is why should I bother? And the question that is in the section is, I think that an online research profile matters for building my reputation but how much does it really matter when I'm publishing my work in good journals anyway? And this is all that universities are bothered about. So the question to Davina is, what really are the benefits of using digital technologies for developing an online research profile? So over to you, Davina. Thank you, Mark. Well, I think the um, main reason really for having an online profile is to, to get your name out there. And there's lots of ways we can do it. We often think of social media, but there's lots of other platforms that help. So if you're publishing in good journals, um, one of the, the key things to have is an ORCID account um, and have that link to USA. And that's really important because it means that you get credit for your work um, and if you have a particularly common name um, I always use the example of John Brown because that those two names can be relatively common you want to make sure that you're getting the right credit for it um, so firstly it helps whatever your approach is whether um, you feel that you're publishing in, in good journals anyway or whether you're building that platform 
but why should we bother? Well, I think there's four sort of answers to this question. And um, Benjamin Horton has um, a, a blog on um, medium.com and I think um, he answers this particularly well. So this is an extract from, um, from his uh, work. But firstly, sharing expertise is really important. So there is um, a, a statistic that around 41% of um, UK users use social media to find news and that's actually really important because that's almost half the population accessing that information and if we want to get our research out there then social media is a really good way to do it because of that um, access and that statistic. I think also it saves time. There's lots of really um, time consuming ways to, to market your research. Social media does this very effectively without having to, to use that much time. But also it facilitates exchanges. We get to hear other um, sort of stories. Stories. So that really helps in discovering new perspectives. So the third reason really is um, we can engage directly with policy makers and I think that's really important. Um, governments, politicians, um, celebrities use social media and we can contact them directly so it breaks down those barriers. We can pose some of those really difficult and challenging questions, get a response um, to those questions as well and it facilitates that open discussion. Um, obviously we we hear a lot about fake news so we can we can actually make sure we're getting the right message ac across communicating the right news and I think um, it also um, boosts, uh, boosts your altrometrics and you may have come across this so altmetrics is um, commonly used on Google but you'll find it in other places and it tracks your usage it tracks impact um, so how many mentions of your name and your research um, it, you may have heard about it in terms of REF the research excellence framework um, it, again it's useful but actually what it does is build that picture of who's interested in your research um, what your environment is how you're engaging um, with others and can give um, some evidence and some background to your own narrative and story about your research so those are my sort of four top tips really as I say they're based on um, a, a great blog post by Benjamin Horton who does social media particularly well um, so if you want to explore that in a bit more detail I definitely recommend having a look at his website and we can circulate the uh, the, the link to that post um, for, for others if you want to have a look at that. Okay thank you Davina. Um, Right, well we're going to move into the second section, but just before I do, can I just point out that the link's in the details section of the YouTube video, just below me at the moment. <laughs> um, okay, so the second section is, what can I use? There's a lot of technology out there, so you know this section is, is really about deciding what sort of technology are useful. So the questions are, which Tech, digital technologies should researchers be using? Next one. I use the university's virtual learning environment in my teaching, but what can I do which will help me to push my career forward as a researcher? The next question. Facebook, ResearchGate, LinkedIn, Twitter, should I use all of these to build my research profile? And the next question, I've signed up on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and I'm using them in my social life. I have thought about using Facebook and Twitter for raising the profile of my research, but I'm not sure that mixing my social life and my research work is such a good thing. Any tips? So, the question for Davina, the overarching question for Davina, will be what digital technologies would you recommend for developing an online research profile in different ways? 
So over to you, Davina. Thank you. I think um, those are all really good questions and um, it is quite difficult sometimes to navigate um, the range of different online resources and platforms. I think the, the main point is understanding why you want to use social media or an online platform. Um, what is the purpose? Are you trying to get a key message across? Are you trying to build your profile? So you, you want to be out there but not necessarily push a particular agenda. And sometimes that can shape which is the best platform. Um, Utilising and making use of internal um, platforms and resources, whether that's for teaching or for other means is really important um, because within universities we have access to our own networks and um, that's really useful uh, particularly when you're building a, a social presence because you can connect and build that base of uh, followers or um, connections depending on what type of um, network you're, you're going to join because you're part of that community, that institutional community. I think out of all of them, the main one to sign up for is ORCID and as I mentioned it connects you to your work and gives you that unique identifier and profile. Um, it also interacts with other social media platforms so um, you can update something in ORCID and easily access your Twitter account. Um, you can also easily access other accounts, perhaps uh, institutional. Um, so it's a good sort of central point of truth to have and it's associated with you as the individual and not the institution so it really helps aid your employability and mobility travelling um, or moving on to other institutions if you need to. I think one of the um, key things is um, should I mix personal and professional um, and that's actually down to you whether you want to do that. It largely depends on your research area because some research is very personal and you may feel very comfortable doing that. I would certainly say do things that make you feel comfortable and not uncomfortable. Um, I do separate the two personally so I generally use um, Facebook personally for family and friends and I use ResearchGate and LinkedIn professionally and I use Twitter for a bit of both um, but generally I tweet when I've got something to say rather than tweeting about um, what I'm eating for my dinner or what the weather's doing. I tend to, to tweet where there's something really burning or I'm very passionate about it but that's just my personal approach. Other people have different approaches. I think also consider um, what device you're going to use for social media and how often you want to do it. Um, if you're going to do it regularly, then perhaps you're going to use your mobile phone. Um, if you're going to, to do it less regularly or you want to make that divide between a work-life balance and have some um, away time from media and social media, and, and often people do want that, um, then perhaps consider a different device. Um, I use my iPad mainly because it's got good connectivity but also um, it's not there constantly so if I feel I need a holiday from technology or from comments then um, on social media uh, I can do that without um, having to withdraw from that technology or that platform altogether. I think um, another useful tip really in, in using technologies is um, to, to plan ahead and consider um, things which are coming up, how you can utilise social media around that. So, for example, if you're presenting at a conference, um, you might want to tell people that this is what you do, providing your research permits that, it's not embargoed in any way, um, and it's a good way to connect to potential people who you're going to see in person at that conference. So, using social media and digital platforms as an aid to face-to-face -face activity is really, really useful. Um, it helps you connect with others, um, but also, as I mentioned, with tools like ORCID, that really helps your social and professional mobility, uh, because that goes with you rather than your institution. Okay, lovely, Davina. So, 
we'll move across now to the third section. And that you, you, you can really build on now what you've already said. And this area is, is involved with the question of where do I start? So the questions have been, what's easy to use? So with so many apps, how do I decide which apps are the most appropriate without spending too much time learning how to use all of them? Next question, what information would you recommend I use to raise my research profile? And another question, I am concerned that I'm writing something which would be criticized. What do you recommend? So Davina, as an overarching question, to encompass and the encompass those questions can you please answer what are the easiest technologies to learn for developing an online research profile and how do I start using them over to you thank you I think getting getting started can be the most daunting thing mainly because um, there's so much choice um, and that can be quite crippling or unknowing where to begin um, Certainly Twitter is very easy to use and it's a good one to get started um, but I think the most important thing is to develop a, a digital plan and be really clear on why you want to use the technologies, what is your end game um, essentially, is it to, to get a particular piece of research out there to make people more aware of your research and, and that will inform which is the best platform, for example different demographics respond to different um, types of platforms so um, Snapchat is largely used by the under 25s so if those people under 25 are your key demographic and your research connects with them um, then Snapchat might be the best way forward Facebook is traditionally used by those who are over 35 so again if you're looking for an older audience then um, Facebook may be the way forward so thinking about the um, the plan what you want to get out of it but also um, the demographic and you can um, simply Google um, the particular online tool and it will give you a, a Wikipedia piece of information which will tell you what their target demographic is um, and also link into different guides so if you're concerned about how best to get started how to use the guides um, then you'll be able to get that information for that very individual piece of um, online or social media um, account via that route as well a lot of the videos um, to support getting started are also online. There's lots of content on YouTube, um, although it isn't very research specific. And I think some of the larger questions really are about how do you make that researcher specific so um, that you're not just noise within um, the, the greater sphere of things, but actually you're making a difference. And I think considering what your end purpose is, is it because you've, you've got something to say or you want to connect with different communities is really important and to keep that central in your um, digital development plan and, and what you want to do. I think um, Taking one uh, platform in particular forward is the, the best way and to get comfortable with it. Um, a lot of them follow a similar format, so once you've mastered one, it's much easier to get on board with, with others. Um, I think also um, what's really important, um, I think your concerns about crit being criticised are, are, are quite grounded because obviously this is an open forum using social media to exchange ideas and in, in some respects the criticism is part of that. So um, do you go into it being aware that other people may have um, a, an opinion um, but it's always useful to get a second opinion before you post information particularly if you feel it's sensitive or it may generate a response um, certainly
certainly um, other people within your research area um, may have had similar experiences or an experience which has informed them in some way. Um, so having somebody proofread it or run the idea past somebody else um, within your research area is a, is a good idea just to, to get that sort of temperature balance um, on whether you should um, go ahead with it. Um, sometimes the controversy is part of the research and therefore um, you may be researching in that particular area and want to engage in that kind of um, robust response online um, and of course having um, a discussion online there is a track record um, and that can be used uh, and certainly in some mixed methods research social media research is becoming much more prominent also one thing to consider is because it's documented, um, although things can be retracted, it's um, obviously much more difficult to do that. So generally, as a rule of thumb, I would say don't post anything that you're not happy saying in person to a real individual. So if you were to have a face-to-face -face conversation um, with somebody about your research or about an opinion and you're comfortable with that, um, that's normally a good rule of thumb. Um, um, obviously putting things on there which are um, particularly sensitive or antagonistic um, then that may attract the wrong type of attention. Um, there is also a useful uh, blog if you want to follow it um, by Mark Zarella and he talks about uh, the quickest ways to switch off your mm -hmm. social media network and one of the, the key things he talks about is how whining really turns people off. Um, so his advice is to actually um, be positive and that's something that he practices but obviously it may or may not be appropriate to always be positive um, but that's one of his um, pieces of advice and, and tools that he uses. I think um, a, a good starting point in, in terms of the technologies out there is, as, as I mentioned, Twitter and um, to actually plan it. So when I first started using um, social media, I used Twitter and I actually planned to tweet once a week. I felt that was a, a right sort of balance. I could manage that. And obviously you don't have to use an awful lot of words. Um, so it can be quite short and succinct. And I actually planned um, 52 tweets. So once a week, um, I, I wrote a, a Word document with these 50, 52 tweets in and I could just copy and paste that. Um, so I had a plan and often there's cycles which which lend themselves to that approach and um, things such as the academic calendar um, that may help or you may have your own individual milestones as well. Davina you've, you've started to talk about this already but as your closing comments would you like to answer the question on how you can get the most from technologies and these questions are what can I do with digital technologies which will use tiny amounts of time to give the biggest return. And as an academic and researcher, time is precious and I don't engage with social networking or wish to be governed by it. So what approach do you recommend? And so as an overarching question here, Davina, I would like you to answer what last minute tips do you have for balancing time with the, the effective use of technology for building a research profile? and over to you one last time. Thank you. Well, I think uh, we've touched upon a couple of those areas. Um, so the first one really going in reverse order is um, if you don't have a lot of time to really plan what it is that you're going to do. Um, so the 52 tweets and being able to copy and paste once a week is a good way of maintaining um, a, a profile, an impact without having to think about that every week. Um, I certainly um, do most of my social media on a um, Monday or Friday afternoon because that's when I procrastinate the most and I, I decided to procrastinate productively and and that time on social media. Um, so fitting it in um, was quite easily, but I, I know um, quite a lot of people who will use their commute to work um, on public transport um, to engage with social media. 
and um, do their, their tweeting or their engagements first thing in the morning or in the evening. Um, and of course, throughout the course of that day, something significant may have happened that they might want to share or comment on. I think um, getting the most out of technology um, is really important to have a key focus. So um, uh, one example of an academic I know who does a lot of tweeting, um, their research is around um, festivals. So they have um, festivals almost every week that they go to. Um, so they've got a very set and full calendar um, and they tweet about that. So that's one way to uh, enable people to, to be aware of their presence and what they're doing and it's directly related to their work. Um, as I mentioned before, going to conferences, giving formal presentations is another way to um, really utilise social media and connect with others. Um, once you are established on social media, um, I would connect to everybody within your institution. That's really quick and easy to do. And from that, you can um, see their connections. And often that opens up to further and further connections and, and um, increases your base. So a quick win is to connect to those within your organisation and then um, see how that organically forms. There is actually um, a statistic that says when you get to 10,000, something magical happens. So whether that's 10,000 followers, 10,000 tweets, um, 10,000 connections on LinkedIn. Um, as part of that sort of social experiment, I'm trying to get to 10,000 connections on LinkedIn. And um, I'm waiting for, for something magical to happen. I'm around the um, 9,500 9, mark at the moment so um, perhaps um, I can report back in the future whether something magical happens at that point but often um, those who were particularly prevalent on social media say that at 10,000 people start coming to them that the engagement dynamic changes that rather than they're seeking others to connect to people start to connect to them so um, there is a, a bit of a background um, theory to that but um, and it may be something you want to explore um, in more detail. There is some great resources in the uh, booklet that we've made available and some information about the 10,000 tweets uh, uh, or 10,000 10, connections are, are in there as well. Um, and then I think the other thing is, is to do something which is um, reasonable and manageable. So um, if you find that it's overwhelming, um, cut it down to size where it's manageable for you. Um, often, if you don't make a start, it might fall off your to-do list. So definitely planning in an hour to, to make a start, um, I think, is, is quite important to begin with. Um, in that hour, just to give you an example, I was very able to set up a Twitter account and start to write um, my 52 tweets. So I really felt I'd broken through in that hour um, and made um, inroads into, into getting started on social media. Um, the final tip I would give is have a look around who does social media particularly well and it may be somebody within your, your institution, it may be somebody um, who's a celebrity, who's famous, what is it that they're doing that attracts people to them um, and how are they doing it and um, often they're lies in why you're engaged with them and also gives you some ideas on how you can engage with others. Okay, Davina. Well, thank you very much for that. It leaves me to say that, that um, thank you to, to Davina for, for going into a webinar on using digital technologies to develop your research profile, where Davina went through why I should be bothered, what can I use, where do I start, and had some lovely tips to really get the most from digital technologies. And thank you for listening until next time. And bye, Davina. <laughs>